Hello. I think Ed's here. There he is. Good run. Good run. See, you are back in the running. That's the longest I've run a week, Shift. Hey. Uh, yeah, so here we are doing our virtual tasting like we always do for you that can't be here on Thursday nights here at ONS. Every Thursday night, we do a tasting of four wines here in person. Chef Chris pairs four beautiful hors d'oeuvres to go with them. We taste the food and wine. We talk about it. We socialize. It's a big time. Um, and then many people have dinner afterwards in the dining room. We're down in the barrel room today filming for the two virtual tastings. If you decide to pick up a tasting kit, which I highly recommend. I would, you're missing out. You can have two full bottles of wine plus some tastings of food to take home and enjoy this video and uh, this really um, high quality video I want to add. So, uh, yeah, my, our son got back into town. Mm -hmm. He came over for uh, dinner last night. Uh -huh. And uh, you know what he's doing today? What? Getting us a list of all the stuff we need for the, all the equipment. So that we can make a proper video? Mm -hmm. All right. right. He, his uh, best friend is in that uh, school in Georgia for oh, film. Oh, wow. Yeah, audio. yeah. Yeah, Atlanta's like the, the yeah. film capital of the South. So, and he's, he's in the film school down there. And so he knows all about these things. He actually works on podcasts. Wow. So, those two are collaborating, giving us the list, and show us, you know, show us how to do everything. I mean, it's Providence. I know you love these grainy videos with terrible sound. I like doing them two or three times at a time when the memory <laughs> when the, dies. When yeah. the memory dies. We've had so many out. technical glitches with this ancient iPad that we're using. But you know what? It works. We don't have a we don't have to pay a production assistant, a director, a boom operator, whatever that is. The no boom engine. operator There's, holds the the boom they hold the, the, the stick. And I guess the stick, stick operator isn't as fancy as the yeah. stick. <laughs> Holder of stick. <laughs> what do you do? I, I hold sticks. I sit here and hold a stick until my mandatory union, union break, yeah. and then I, I don't hold the stick. And then the stick, I get yeah. put it down. And then, and then the down. stick coordinator puts it up for me. That's right. I just lay it on the ground. Well, uh, we we really love what we do, and I want to thank you for tuning in to our silly videos so that Chris and I can enjoy wine. That's really what it boils down to. Pretty much, thank you. And uh, we're gonna be uh, in a little different area than most people would expect. This is from up in the Valpiacello Lake Garda area of northeastern Italy. So uh, really predominantly known for red wines, such as, well, we did a Rapasso mm -hmm. last week that people yep, love. Oh, Cor the Corvina you grape. You did that at the lunch chef table too, and it was went really yes, well. Yes, 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 yes. We had it with that duck. Boy, that was banging over the top. The uh, of course you have Valpiacello, you have Amarone, all of these wonderful things. Red, 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 red. So I thought it'd be great to. I mean, look, the weather's beautiful, chef. It's like seventy-eight degrees with a little what breeze. What are you talking about? Radiant sunshine. It is quintessential spring. The doors are coming off the Jeep. I can't stand it any longer. Yeah, they I must can't come believe off. how long they made it. Well, you know, I was a little bit of a wimp when it was in the 40s at night, but I'm just going to bite the bullet. And, and, and you folks at home, when Ed lived on the mountain and it would be <laughs> 25 degrees, he'd have his windows open. Yeah, I've, I've turned into you, a lowlander. soft, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a mountain You're man flat anymore. Flat-footer is what I think. Flat-footer, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm soft. I can't handle the cold. Uh, but... I will. I'll just have to deal with it because the doors are coming off the Jeep. Can't stand it anymore. Well, just don't leave the house at 630. You'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what do we have here, Chef? We have the Laguana from Zanato. Zanato. Not to be confused with the lizard. That's right. Laguana is a, is a region of, of um, said area around Lake Garda. And this happens to be Treviano grape. This is really, really pretty. Now, Treviano can be many things. Oftentimes, it's kind of this unremarkable white, I would say. And it also can be used, to, and honestly, it can be used to make distillates. You know, it's, it's pretty abundant, to say the least, in terms of being produced just for the alcohol that they can distill. Uh, but here, this is Zanotto. Of course, we love Zanotto. We love all their stuff. 
uh, well, I haven't found anything that I don't like, I'll say that. And then, you know, they, they produce high, what I would consider high value wines, and uh, they're not just value, they're, they're, they're very, very delicious. And they've been doing it for 60 plus years. They know what they're doing and they do it well. And I, honestly, I think they only get better. But my experience has been with them over 20 years of drinking their wines that they don't put losers out. And I I love it. they take grapes that would, in my opinion, not be so remarkable and make them remarkable. And I think that's what you're gonna have right here, Chef. Well, it's, it's fantastic. It's just a single varietal. It's just kind of like mm -hmm. a field blend. It's 100% Trebbiano. And I gotta tell you, the nose on this thing, it'll trick you into thinking it's a, um, like, it could almost fall in lines of like a Sancerre oh, or easy. a Foy Fou, Fou, uh, Fume, uh, or Fousse rather. Uh, no, that's Chardonnay, sorry, Fume. What am I trying to say here, Chef? I can't even get, I can't even get my, my, you know what it's a problem? I'm trying to compare an Italian wine to a French region. That's why my tongue's bad. Well, should be doing there's that. a lot of uh, pitfalls there. Yes, but. Very, very sob blancish on the nose, and it has really intense acidity, which would also Tons. would also remind you of Sauvignon Blanc. Now, of course, this is in the northern part of the country, so you're getting into uh, higher elevations as well, more mineral in the soil because of the mountains. Uh, all the things that, uh, well, that, that lend wines to the minerality and brightness in other parts of the world that are so prized for. I just happen to name France in this particular uh, comparison, but this really doesn't, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that this is a, re a replacement for Sauvignon Blanc. I'm just saying that it has similar notes. And uh, the point being is that if you like Sauvignon Blanc, you probably like this. Yeah, and uh, it, this has a lot working in its favor. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. They do, uh, they do some Lee's uh, AG on here to give it some richness. Um, you can see it does have some decent color in the glass. Uh, the acidity is absolutely striking. And, uh, well, what can I say? It, it really does provide all of this tropical and citrus, all the things that really, to me, scream spring. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just absolutely. like this is a beautiful uh, back porch wine after a long day while you're cooking chicken on the grill kind of thing. You know, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I just listening to the birds and swatting mosquitoes. Uh, well, luckily we haven't had the mosquitoes yet, but these yeah. birds need to take a, get, try the decaf. They're singing because like they that. Are There's just, crazy, uh, yeah, they're, they are, they're in they're full. They're at it. They're mating. They are at it. They're trying to get a mate. Yep. So we'll have a bunch of baby birds soon. But uh, Chef, what, do you, what, is, what is your thoughts on this one? I love it. Of course, I love the acid and the minerality of this. It's very clean wine, mm -hmm. you know, which I really love. You know, it's not a, a mouth coater. I mean, you get to mm -hmm. enjoy every sip and it's not, you know, crushing your palate. It's yep. just re re refreshing and delicious. You know, I'm not getting a lot of uh, citrus, which you normally would get yep. with a lot of acid and minerality. Sure. And so I, I find that it seems to be more melon-esque. Than, yeah, underripe melon. Yeah, stuff. Under, and, uh, I, like, I get a lot of pineapple. Too. Yeah, yeah, like, absolutely. Like the white, pineapple, the white pineapple, not the golden, mm -hmm. the juicy version. I think it's delicious. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, what are you gonna pair with? Well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you decide. Okay, you got two things. All right. Because I had two things in my head, and of course now I've tried it. Yeah. Be happy either way, but uh, got in some beautiful fluke, mm -hmm. so we could do a little fluke with this with a little. Pea salad, you know, got some great little spring peas in, so mm -hmm. we can do some. Or, I'm also going to make some empanadas, some sausage Ooh. empanadas, which you know I'm going to use for something else. But I was thinking that might even work with cut this through because it. the pastry will tone down the mm -hmm. sausage. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, we love these bright, mm -hmm. these bright acidy yeah, whites, like especially sausage. like. Like we love uh, Spanish whites from the Galicia uh, area. They like the Gruners too. Yeah, Austria. You know? Yeah, like I, I, yeah, and of course German whites uh, are the ideal thing for sausage. But I think you're right. I mean, I think this would slice right through it. Now, what else are you gonna have in the filling? Do you know? Have you decided yet? Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna do the empanada. Yeah. Then we're going to do the fluke. 
Um, and then well, I'll tell you. Um, I mean, what's in the filling of them? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's it's just uh, it's Darcy Farms sausage, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of uh, diced veg, a little bit of egg, probably some some parm or cow band. Yeah, and then I'm gonna I would, I would do a little that. egg egg wash on the pastry. Let's go empanada. Okay, you got. I it. think that's a real that's a well. It's actually too what what I kind of like about it beyond the flavor pairing profile. It's gonna hold up great in the box. Oh yeah, as yeah, opposed yeah. to it's kind of hard tricky with a. Flutes are tender, fish, yeah. They are very tender, and yeah. so I think it would be a more enjoyable experience an hour later. Yeah, one 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 shake of the bag on and the way yeah, out, and, and that flute could dissolve. Yeah, even if we fried it, I still think it's gonna. Yeah, I think the empanada is gonna hold yeah. up and really show out well with this. Yeah, I'm sure that it would work great with that fluke dish, but uh, well, we'll probably we're gonna do the fluke in house with this. But I think both would work. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and yep. then we'll do the empanada with the other red. But mm -hmm. um, I still think there's room for both. I mean, I think, but it would be a better overall experience, mm -hmm. you know, taking it out of the box at home. Absolutely. Well, um, I hope that what you, when you're watching this video, I hope that you're enjoying that empanada because I don't have one in front of me right now, but I'm really looking forward to having one tomorrow. Or three. Or three, that's right. You know, when I, whenever I go to visit mom up in Riverside, they got a little empanada shop oh, right down the block. Yeah. And oh, wow. I mean, it's just, you know, just, just put it in pastry. I'll eat it, basically. Yeah, I was going to do this little veggie thing. Uh, I've got a ton of veggies and fresh veggies from Minglewood today. But and I was going to do like a little kohlrabi uh, empanada. Yeah, I saw you working on a kohlrabi. But really I didn't get as much as I thought I was going to get. Mm -hmm. So I'd already dedicated, I'm doing a kohlrabi slaw. Mm -hmm. with the scallops for the weekend and so I kind of had to dedicate it all to that because I thought I was going to get more yeah um but you know next week there'll be an abundance and we'll, we'll do a vegetarian one next week some more of a fashion mm. chef I forgot to tell you Mr. Chef Chris Fulton texted me yesterday so he's going to be here to taste him tomorrow wow yeah. nice yeah what a nice treat he said that is a treat yeah, he doesn't get any, you know, he's been working a lot and yeah, not getting days get off. Time off. And yeah. so getting a Thursday night off is a big deal for him. He's been trying to do this for months and months. He just hasn't had the staff to do it, but he's, he's feeling confident now. He's huh? threatening by saying he's going to be here. We'll it. see. I hope he is. I think that's a beautiful thing. I hope he is. Uh, so uh, it's always nice when uh, our, our compadres uh, make it to the winery. Amen winer. to that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Amen to that. Well, chef. That is a delicious meal. It is. It is. Mm -mm -mm. Well, remember the name Zanotto. Always That's high terrific. quality stuff. They're about you know, they're Amarones, whatever. They're Ripasso's. Beautiful presentation on that, too. They also have killer uh, rosés, too. Wow, yeah. now we're talking. Yeah, we got a lot of delicious rosés as well. All right, uh, well, we're going to take a little turn. I think I mentioned couple of weeks back in our video that I was excited about all these new things I've been getting to try and taste and gosh I just don't I got so many things to show I can't you know it takes me well, a couple so weeks many, to, only so many opportunities I gotta get through a few weeks but we did we did showcase this at the chef's table and boy was it a hit and this is a beautiful 10-year tawny that is a port meaning it is from Portugal for Mr. Broadbent. Uh, Broadbent, uh, one of the, well, you know, he's actually known for being uh, like the greatest Madeira uh, mind, uh, Thank you. palette producer, et cetera, et cetera. Appreciate I've it. actually had a chance to meet uh, Mr. Broadbent. Of course, he's the great grandson, but uh, and I believe his father was a master of wine like the 23rd or 26th master line or something but mr broadbent uh, he's a great importer and wine producer as well distributor all the things he does all kinds of wines uh, madeira just happens to be a specialty but uh this is a really delicious beverage as i said we had a lot of success at the chef's table you talk about complex now i always tell people we're gonna have sweet wine with dessert you know, it's just, it's just a given. And because desserts are sweet, right? I mean, unless we're doing cheese and then, you know, heck, this would still go with cheese. It's still, well, good luckily. That's, that's Guess the, what? amazing that this stuff is so versatile. But uh, anyway, so we like 
complex. We're not complex. into simple. Yeah, yeah. You know, because none of your dishes are simple. Every now and again, we have a simple dish. And then I get, put a simple well, we one. Do, we do, do some it's, simple it's, dishes, but it's to showcase the, the, the specially elevated ingredients. Like uh, the wagyu, <clears throat> the wagyu, like so where you're trying to just like let it or lobster, you know something yeah. super, you know foie gras, something super high end. You don't want to like mask it, yeah. you know, with a bunch of chefy stuff. I mean, you really want to kind of just get out of its way. But that so yeah, but, but foie gras is complex on some. True, I think. Well, I know foie gras can take a lot of different roles, wear a lot of hats too. Yeah. But I guess I was just thinking of really yeah, yeah. expensive <laughs> things. Sure, sure. Uh, that you don't want to spend. A lot of more money making something that's already amazing on its own and then masked. Yeah, clutter, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, yeah, I totally agree, Chef. I mean, there's times to to accentuate things, and there's other there's times to just step back and go, voila, uh, enjoy. Yes, and uh, well, that was well. So anyway, so your dessert was uh, as was as complicated as usual. And so I needed a complex wine that had some sweetness. And so, voila, here's the 10-year Porto. And we, uh, we really enjoyed it. Uh, we, when I say we, because I was drinking it too. <clears throat> After work. Uh, but uh, so this happens to be a 10-year. People ask me, well, what is a 10-year? Is it 10 years old? Well, on average, it's 10 years. It could be, you know, a blend of, you know, like some 11 and 9 or, you know, whatever, 3 and 17 or whatever it is. But it, it, it should average at least 10 years. Um, the difference between what most people would call port, uh, we call it ruby port. Ruby port doesn't see a lot of oak influence. It, it, it can be completely unoaked. It can be put into an oak barrel that's neutral. Uh, it could be in concrete. But in terms of you know, standard ruby port or regular port, if you will, <laughs> As we like it, yeah. Uh, it, it it really you really want the fruit to to shine. You want it to be very fresh fruit driven. So they're doing things to preserve that, not get in the way of the of the fresh fruit. So in tawny, it's a more it's going to be we're getting way more into oak. Uh, they call them pipas. They're they're basically a a, a barrel. Uh, they can be in different sizes. But I think the average ones like. Like a double size of a, of our standard barrels that we use, you know, it's like 500 or 600 liters, which is you know a couple hundred gallons or something like that. Or, or no, I'm sorry, like a hundred gallons. My math's bad. Just can you get the idea? It's a little bit bigger it's barrel. More. It's more, yeah. And but but it's also we're looking for oxidative nature here, not just the oak influence. Now the beauty of the, this is we get two different things from this type of of interaction with, with the wood, we get the spices that we're going to get from the oak. And man, you, there's just so much going on. Of course, that kind of vanilla thing going on. And then you get the oxidative part where this looks very brownish. You know, this is, this is a brownish hue and there, that's where the oxidation comes in. A ruby port is like I don't know, it's, it's almost looks like, uh, I don't know, like it's like purple or really dark, almost inky purple, really, really fresh, like a big black plum uh, is what I think of when I think of Ruby Port. And this is not, this is brickish. It's, it looks like, uh, oh gosh, we opened something and it's gone bad. But that is not the case. It's actually mo better than it ever is known. Even gooder. Yeah, even gooder. So obviously, well, maybe it's not obvious to many of you, but this is a fortified wine, meaning that there has been brandy added to it. And that's where the sweetness comes from. Before fermentation is completed, they arrest it, meaning they stop fermentation while the sugars are still remaining in the, in the grape ferment. And when you dump in brandy, it kills the yeast. So it, it just seals the wine off at a certain um, bricks or, or, or residual sugar is probably the proper term at this point in the fermentation. So you can seal it off at whatever percentage of residual sugar you want. And then you start in the, the aging process. So this was a, you know, a pretty purple, but now it's not because of the, of the time in oak. Um, you know, and we're talking about, you know, 
old school stuff here where they're still, you know, they're still doing like foot mashing of the grapes right. when it comes to tawny. You know, they want that, they want a lot of organic things happening. They, they don't want to get laboratory with tawny. They want, they want all of the uh, environmental things to facilitate oxidation and, you know, to, to get these nutty and dried fruit flavors and smells. And boy, I love it. It's it's just it's just in I have, I've had a sip and it's just chock full of all those things. I mean, you could dates. We could fill a papyrus girl with yeah, all the Lord. things, but the nuts uh, are really coming out in this. Walnut. <laughs> What are those little orange fruits that they put in trail mix? So they put little little chunks in. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Is it guava or something? Little, 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 little. Or papaya. 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 Like dried papaya. Mm -hmm. Dried papaya. Honey, molasses, cinnamon. You know what's great for your chef? Though? Clove. Oh yes, clove. I love clove. It is all over this. Mm -hmm. That beautiful acidity. Oh, yeah, it's balanced. That acidity just swipes mm -hmm. all the sugar right mm -hmm. away. It, it is so toasty. much happening. I mean, like... Toasted, big, like toasted marshmallows, Big maybe? toast. Oh, it's absolutely meringue toasted. Mmm. Mmm. It just goes on and on. There's almost like a white pepper or cayenne. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is there is a prickle. There's a little bit of heat. White white pepper for sure. Almond, good lord, it is so nutty. You like when you get those big Marcona almonds? Yes. And you toast them really hot. Yeah. You toss them in the oil, butter, oil, and salt right when they come out of the oven, so mm -hmm. they really kind of glaze on there, mm -hmm. just like that. Brown <clears throat> butter. The brown butter, absolutely. Um, um, definitely have some noise set. Vanilla color. Well, yeah. Almost like, um, to me, there's a, like this, texturally, it's like, if I think of melted ice cream, it's that, that kind coating, of thickness. That thick coating, and, and, and it just clings everywhere. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, you can, I mean, still took a sip four or five minutes ago. And but those nut, the, the, the nut, Finish just goes on. I mean, on. the so walnuts, maybe praline, praline, for praline. sure. Because I mean, I, I mean, obviously the walnut, Caramel. macadamia. My, what? Yes, white, yes, white macadamia. White macadamia, just, and not even toasted, like when you crunch into it. Maybe just a light toast. You get the idea. This is a very complex beverage. Now, we're we're serving up in a wine glass. Uh, this is not something you would pour five ounces of. I mean, you're probably going to. But that's not really the way. It's, True. Yeah, I mean, I think um, two to three, two ounces really plenty. Two to three ounces. Uh, this is this would actually be great at for aperitif. Oh yeah. You know, er, like that's early with with early like with your with cheese, your cheese, olives, and nuts. Um, um, well, and then you swing it down to dessert, and then you get. You know what? I'll, I'm sorry. This would really also be good with salty food too, like secured hams mm -hmm. and things oh, like that. Oh, you better believe. You get that contrast thing going on. But uh, then, of course, at dessert, there's almost nothing you can't pair with this. It, you know, creme brulee. Uh, creme yeah. brulee is a no-brainer. Uh, but you could go creme. all different ways. I mean, you could do something really fruit-driven, mm -hmm. and obviously, it's going to flourish around chocolates of all sorts. Rugula. Rugula. There you Which go. I don't know if it's necessarily dessert, but um, we, we tend to use it as a dessert. Uh, often. Yeah. Often. That's one of those kind of tweeners, you know, it's not mm -hmm. so sweet. It, you know, it's almost like a like a brunch type thing. More of a brunch. Which yeah. which everything is combined, like when you're eating brunch, you're gonna have sweet and savory yeah. on the same plate. Right. And with the same beverage. So, so what you're taking bites of of sweet and savory with one beverage at brunch, so it, it works. So what we're saying is this might be a good brunch wine, as, as intense as it is. They're talking about 20% alcohol though, so uh, Probably if you, better finishing br up brunch. Brunch, like if maybe see. if brunch at home. This one, I was actually gonna say brunch at home <laughs> where you kinda have- I feel like this would go good with 
with like those maple link sauces. Hey, it might be. Isn't that? I like, think there might be some in here. Uh, yeah, I mean, there might be. They might have actually juiced the maple sausage in it. I'm like, it is. But there's you know, so much your going on. progression of brunches. Well, of course, you and I are gluttonous, so we we, we 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 we're the kind of people who eat three courses for brunch, mm -hmm. even at home. But you know, you kind of start with the eggy stuff. Yes. And then you work. Mm -hmm. Your way out, and then, but you and I are more kind of like the the cheese fruit yes. dessert people mm -hmm. last, not first. Right. Yeah. So this would be great to have your bubbles or your white early with yes. your eggs, and as your brunch progresses into the third hour, right when it's time for cheese and dessert, you're, you're opening it. up the port. I love it. I know this is going to sound weird, Chef. I can't stop talking about the the things that I'm picking up here. But I'm also picking up uh, cinnamon graham crackers. Yes. I don't think have I've you ever, ever had. A, I don't think I've ever used that as a description in a while. Have you ever had a fig Newton with a graham cracker crust? I have not. But when you said fig Newton, I immediately started thinking about this. So they they make them with a. They, I've seen them before, or, I, yeah. and actually, it's not in the uh, the commercial mm. Keebler section. I went to a little bakery mm. somewhere mm. where they made their own fig Newtons, but it was like a graham. I bet it was up. Yeah. I mean, and I love Fig Newton, so yeah. it was like yeah, yeah. a, it gave you the nostalgia from the past, but it had the quality of the of, the, of it being handmade. Chef, a quick transition while we're talking about figs, because I've been in the, you know, obviously we just survived the craziest week. It was a hard week. And, uh, you know, the weeks just keep getting crazy, but, you know, we survived. We had, uh, well, we had a birthday. We had a uh, 51. We had a, a, a wonderful Thursday night tasting. We had a Wednesday chef's table. We had Wednesday lunch chef's table. We had a Friday catering. We had a big catering. We had Friday chef's table of 13. Saturday all day was the Bud Break Festival where the downtown was complete. What is the term I want to say? But I'm I not going to say, say it on this, on this program. I call it an SS. So you can figure out what that and means. And we did, what, 260 covers for lunch. Yeah. And then we had 16 people at the chef's table. And happy birthday, Jasmine. That was a lot of fun. Um, and then Sunday was Mother's Day brunch with another 150 people. And then I went home and, and, and collapsed. And I actually got sick. Uh, but Monday, day off, went out. Did lots of yard work, snap dragon planning, and all kinds of good stuff like that, and kind of got my gears back in order. Uh, you know, Tuesday uh, we took Joe back to the to the airport, so he'll be gone for a couple of weeks and fly back in. Mom's gonna stick around, and I'll be helping her with more yard work. But this weekend, well, of course, we've got our Thursday night tasting, and then we've got a big catering on Friday. And we've got another packed house at the chef's table. I think, what did I say, 17, 17 or something like 17, that? 17, Saturday night. And, and we have three it, 20 tops this weekend. Yeah. The and then the next week, is a, oh, I won't even get into that. But it's been just remarkably, you know what? It's hard, but I sure do love it. It's so much fun. I love going to battle with you and, and doing all the things. I, I do as well, but th this, one was, this one was tough. It was, yeah. This one was tough. Yeah. I went home uh, Sunday after we were done, you know, Mr. Wishart was out of town all week. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was, it was a challenging week anyway. Sure. But, you know, I went ahead and, I went ahead and mowed when I got home Sunday. That's smart, yeah. I uh, mowed the yard, finished up the last little chores. You know, I wanted the house to be just right when she got home. There's nothing worse coming home from big end to having to be Sure, home. then you got work, yeah. So got the house just so, and then Monday, you know, was busy. We were in here, you know, doing our Monday cleaning and, and it was just, you know, getting here doing that, and I'm just like, my God, look at this week we have in front of us. You know, there was no, right. oh, let's, yeah. you know, let's enjoy this victory. It's like, and, uh, they're just, they're and then, just you know, young. yesterday was a great lunch, and Huge today's lunch. a good lunch. And, yeah. you know, it's just, we got to work tonight. We got a pharmaceutical private dinner tonight, and, um, yeah, the hits just keep coming, and, and, and next week. Next I mean, week's a monster. We're not going to talk so about it. We'll, we'll talk about it next week. I'm so excited we're going to get this Sunday off because know, we right? worked two of the last three Sundays. Actually, three, three of the last, last four because of the wine dinner. Yeah. And so. And that was awesome. And normally Mondays are like half work days anyway. So Sundays are really precious. 
Well, it was and losing those so many in such a short amount yeah. of time. If they're sprinkled out there, they don't mean they they're don't not hurtful. Right. But you're right. Three out of four was tough. But we we chose to do that because we wanted to squeeze that wine dinner in with our buddy Andy. Boy, that was I'm so glad we did. That was that was worth losing a Sunday for. But I was the reason why this is so fresh in my mind, Chef, is I just talked to Becca, our event coordinator. And we were we were like, all right, so we need to plan some other kind of function. She's like, well, you can't do this week, you can't do this week, you can't do this week. Because like, it's, they're just lined we're up. We're looking in June. July. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we are going to have another event soon. But oh. when I say soon, I mean in July. Uh, I was telling you. You know, we only got two weeks left in May. My kids got out of school in two weeks. Yeah. The, um, I was telling you, anyway, I was being an idiot, thinking about something. I was outside in the yard last night, and the yard's looking so good, and I was, you know, getting dinner ready, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, we need to have, like, a, one of those ghost pop-up, you know, secret dinners on uh, Sunday soon here. And she just looked at me like I was crazy. Yeah, you are crazy. I mean, I, we love to do it. That's the thing. We do it's love so to do much it, but we, we've, to got to, yeah, we've got to, we've got to manage our, we've got to manage ourselves. I still and, want to do it. Though. Maybe in the fall. And I'm still trying to get out to, uh, yeah, uh, some of our very loyal uh, customers out there. Uh, they're not customers, they're friends, but uh, they've been wanting me to get out there to uh, to, to see their property and stuff, and like I just gotta this make is, time. You gotta make trying to about. coordinate everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, gotta make I, I did. I was able to go. Uh, we when mom and I dropped off uh, Joe at the airport. When we swing back through, we spent a couple hours with uh, Chris and Michelle. Yeah, some of our other really nice uh, to, to uh, uh, actually, they're they're uh, I guess honorary employees. And they, they are every, yeah, all they of our employee all parties. Stuff. Yeah, and uh, that was really great. He's going through. Um, uh, rehab for his yeah, shoulder, shoulder and his, his shoulder's getting up pretty good you know, he's, nice. he's doing a good job with that uh, he's just you know a lot of he's uncomfortable a lot of pain. you know after a while that's just so yeah. nagging and you can't stop the the the, the, the routine because yeah. then you're just prolonging it so right. I, that's got to be that's the mental part that it's gets it's hard. you know that's what when i so i went through that knee. yeah and i did 18 months of rehab on it and um, you know the, I think they gave me like thirty six or forty weeks uh, of of rehab, but that was not enough. I, I just kept paying out of pocket till I was right. But uh, my massage therapist, who was excellent, she told me is um, she's like, he's this is gonna sound crazy, but it's ninety percent mental, ten percent yeah. physical. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, you know, that's where I, you know, being a runner has helped me. I think is that. Because it is completely a mental sport, mm -hmm. you know. It's it, every no one wants to run. To be honest with you, uh, you have to tell yourself that you're going to run and run through, you know, all the quit. And uh, a rehab's a lot like that, in my opinion. It's because it hurts. Uh, you have bad days. You have bad weeks. You. It's you, the setbacks. Yeah, there's setbacks. Yes. And there you get setbacks long into the process Wait, yeah like when you think you should be done and you're just like why am i not yeah. out on the jungle gym yeah. and you're having a setback yeah definitely. and that that's all mental but uh it was really nice to uh to spend some time with him and see him out of his arm brace that was great oh, that's he huge. didn't have his that's arm brace on so like he's getting there when i saw him friday time. he still had it on so that's a big deal yeah. or maybe he puts it on when he goes out for accidents kind of thing yeah maybe know. maybe um i know he just started driving he can he's allowed to drive like 20 minutes so he, he, he could he, you know there, we, well, where we met them was like helpful. five minutes from his house so he met he, he got to drive there well, that's really so that, that's a huge that's a reward. But, uh, you know, I do love, um, you know, there's so many people that I would love to, I would love to find ways to meet with everybody all the time. And I, I am always trying to. I just want anyone to know that that thinks that, uh, you know, I'm not, because I am. And, I, you know, our friends, Tim and Beth at, at, at Topsail. I mean, if they've offered me once, they've offered me a thousand times. Yeah, times. same. Come, and and I've got to do, gotta 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 do, do that. that. Especially, you know, and it's hard, too. It's like, yeah. I'll scoot down to Wilmington. And, you're, you're and got, I'm like, there. you got your I'm brother, like, your nieces, your nephews, nephews, your parents. And I've got like eight hours. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's got to turn, you got to flip it. You got to yeah. flip it. Come <laughs> right. Up. 
uh, yeah. same. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's hard, but we uh, just know that we're all we're, we're thinking about everybody. We want to we want to see everybody as much as we can. But you know what? Um, we do have this video, so that's something. I guess we can at least than... stay able to stay a little bit in touch yeah. with the it's video. It's more than something, Chef. Um, I don't know that we ever decided anything on the time. Oh yeah, the yeah. I'm doing the, uh, that beautiful <laughs> cheese from Boxcar, the Rocket Roviolo. Oh, sweet. Gorgeous cheese. Yeah. Uh, doing that with uh, dried dates. Nice. And a little bit of prosciutto. Oh, yes, yes. So sweet we're kind of going the front end of the Beautiful. aperitif style. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. that could also be a great dessert. Well, it, to me, that is a great dessert. Yeah. I mean, I would love, I mean, the, the dates are sweet from mm -hmm. the drying process. Um, that cheese is like eating butter. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, obviously we were talking about the salt. Uh, yeah. Content you need salt with these uh, buttery, sweet, salty things. I mean, it, it all works. So yeah, it's yeah. gonna be great. Um, well, uh, what can I say? Uh, oh, so I want one more little shout out there. I want to congratulate Mr. Nick Cribben, our longtime bartender, who is going to be leaving us very soon. He just uh, finished his exams. He's walking Saturday, graduating Huge. with high honors. Uh, what what an impressive feat! Uh, he is going to be truly missed. But uh, you so know what? Proud of him. Yeah, I just couldn't see his evolution. Oh my from God! From the day he walked in here, the way he's walking out, there's what a no, triumph of humanity. No, nothing's gonna stop that kid, that young man, rather, mm -hmm. from any goal. He's he's incredibly driven, and we congratulate you, brother. And uh, hey, all of you out there, thanks for watching. We will see you in about a week. Take care, everyone. Thanks for being with us. Stay warm. We'll see you soon.